Today I'm gonna to talk about the no light bait needed soft plastics, but in particular today I'm gonna to talk about the no light bait needed eight inch paddle tails. So this paddle tail quickly became my favorite plug probably this season, or at least my favorite soft plastic this year. And the reason it became such a favorite of mine was because it's a very easy to use lure. You can use it in a variety of different structures and it was productive, it was very productive throughout all of those different structures. So I did really well off of the rocks with these, especially when the water got pretty gnarly. And it being a larger profile lure, uh, being eight inches, I mean, you can see these soft plastics here are, are big, like real big. This is a very nice profile, especially for big striped bass, which is what I target. I also use them in Florida this past spring and I, I caught pretty nice size snook on them. I hooked into some unbelievably big tarpon on them too. So they catch fish. They have really good hardware on them too. If they can withstand the tarpon, then they can definitely withstand the striped bass. So I was in at no point this season and I'm gonna get into a crazy story coming up here in a second that I haven't told anyone online or I've told a few people, but uh, it's it's a heartbreaking story. Let's, Let's just say that, but um, I've had no fears when it comes to putting pet pressure and power into a fish. Uh, I can lock up on this. The jig heads are just, they're very strong and very sturdy hooks. Um, I've, I've hooked a lot of really big bass on them and I, I'm very confident that I'm not bending out uh, when, it, when it comes to big bass, especially how they performed with tarpon, which is just ridiculously big fish. So they're a very easy to use plug. And what I like to do when I'm fishing them is reel at a slow, steady pace. My objective is to get it about a foot or a foot and a half off of the rocks, the bottom of the water. If there's rocks in which I was fishing into a lot of rock structure, you don't really want to get it snagged. But the good thing about the jig heads here is that the way that they place the eye that you connect to your line so high up on the jig head. When you're swimming this down into, if you can imagine, you're swimming this along the bottom. If you hit a rock like this, you can pop up and instead of that hook just getting stuck straight into the rock, you can pop it and it's just gonna pop up above the rocks, which is perfect because then you can really be willing to fish it like right in the structure where those striped bass are gonna be. Because the objective for me is you're fishing in pretty big surf with fairly heavy jig heads. Like these are a half ounce jig heads or one fourth ounce jig heads, um, I believe. So like they're, they're heavy. And um, what you want to have happen is that plug to swim right on the bottom of the water. And that's where those striped bass are gonna be hanging out, especially those big ones. And what I like to do is fish them really slow. Like I'm talking about as slow as I can get away with reeling, I'm gonna fish it that slow. The tail on these are very big and they, and I mean, you can see, like I'm not even moving my hand, you can see how soft the plastic is here. Like any little movement with my hand, any like jiggling or shaking, like that tail is moving around. So you can reel this unbelievably slow in the water and it's just gonna thump away. Thump, 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 as it's getting pulled through the water. So what I'm trying to do is really swim it right, right on the bottom there where those striped bass are hanging out. And I did really well in big surf with these. So what I would do is I would have these big, these big waves crashing and there'd be a little bit of wave sweep and I'd be swimming this right along the bottom and it would just be just right in that strike zone, thumping along. No matter how crazy the surf was, it's gonna be giving you a proper presentation for the striped bass to, to grab. As I was saying, like I have no issue with fishing extremely heavy drag uh, with these plastics. And a few of the spots that I was fishing was very, like there's a lot of structure for those bass to break me off on. So I needed to fish them really strong. Having such a strong, sturdy jig head allowed me to do that. All right, and here is the story. So I was into uh, a good bite of fish. I was wetsuiting out to these rocks on Cape Ann and I was into 
a lot of like low 40 inch class fish to a few mid 40 inch class fish, but there's nothing bigger than that. And so all week I'd been catching 41s to 44 inch bass and I was super stoked. I mean, those are very nice quality bass. And just for a weight range, those bass were varying from 25 pounds up to like 35 pounds. That was about the, the weight range of those fish. I was fishing with a 100, oh sorry, I was fishing with a 200 size van stall on with 50 pound braided line and it was attached to a 50 pound leader. So for me on Cape Ann, I'm fishing for the most part 30 pound braid to 40 pound leader. So that's a pretty heavy setup for me. And the reason I was fishing such a heavy setup was because I was fishing in structure where there's a rock that was about, I don't know, maybe 10 feet out to my left that if the bass ran in that direction, they were breaking me off on. And I just couldn't afford to have those fish break me off. And so because I'm standing on my rock here and there's huge surf coming in and I've wetsuited way out, I, I can't really move around a lot because I, there's these big ground swells that are coming in and every once in a while you get a rogue wave and it's just, it's pretty sketchy. So I'm not trying to do too much and move around too much. I'm just trying to survive when these ground swells come up and hit me and push me back on the rock. So I get out there one night and it's a pretty sporty night. I, it took me a while before I even got out onto the rock. And I'm looking out there and I'm like, okay, I think I can get out there. I get out there, there's big swells coming in, but I'm, I'm just past where they're breaking. So the waves are kind of building as they're coming over the rock that I'm standing on. And I'm, I make maybe three or four casts and I hook into this one bass. I'm like, oh, this is a big fish. And I could tell it was a big fish because uh, when I, it wasn't really moving that much when I hooked it. And I could also tell that it wasn't realizing that it was hooked. And it started swimming straight at me, uh, but like very slowly. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna let this fish come in. I'm just really very slowly, just trying to get the thing in behind me. Cause I'm out on the rock, the behind me in the water closer to the land is probably 10 feet deep. And so I'm perched on the rock and I get the fish in maybe 10 feet away from me behind me on the rock. So it swims in kind of a semi-circle from straight out the front all the way to behind me. And I then start trying to lift this fish up, which I'm now starting to realize, wow, this is a really heavy bass. And I lift this fish up and I lift this fish up and then it turns and it runs, which I was expecting because I was like, I knew, it, I knew that the fish didn't think it was hooked yet. This fish ran. And it ran and ran and ran and ran and ran. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, okay, good. It can run all it wants because I have it behind me. The structure where it can break me off is to the, my, just to my left, maybe straight out just to my left a little bit. And the fish that I hooked, I hooked almost straight out and it was running all the way to my right. And it just keeps running out and running out and running out. Got out a hundred yards, got out 200 yards. Kept running, kept running. So now I'm sitting here hooked into this fish and I'm like, wow. I've caught in my life, I've been very fortunate enough to catch a couple of 50 pound class fish. I had a 51 pounder out of the Cape Cod Canal when it was back in the heyday, and I don't even really count that one. And then I've had other 50 pound bass that I've caught off of beaches with 150 size reels. I had a 52 pounder I caught off one of the beaches on Cape Ann, and that was on 150 size reel, 30 pound braid, and I was fishing fairly light drag, did not pull this much drag. And for reference, the other 25 to 35 pound bass I had been catching prior to that fish were pulling maybe 20 feet of line at the most. In, and then they were eventually coming in. Like they're still pulling like a couple feet here and there, but 20, maybe 20 feet at the most they're pulling. This fish pulled probably 100, maybe to 200 yards of line. And everyone always says, oh, a fish pulled 100 yards of line or whatever. No, no, no. I don't think you, you fully understand how far 100 yards is. Like that's ridiculously far. And this fish is pulling and pulling and pulling and I can't stop it. And it's just going low and slow. And I just couldn't stop it. It goes all the way out straight in front of me and then stops running. And I'm like, oh, I might have a chance. But then as I'm reeling it in, I realize, well, the fish is 200 yards out there. The structure that it can break me off on is just to my left and it's swimming in that direction. 
my drag is already as tight as possible and I grab my spool to try to turn the fish. I'm pulling up on the fish as hard as I can and the line just zzz, pulls out of my hands. I couldn't even turn it. And it keeps swimming towards the left, swimming towards the left. And I loosen up all the way because it's getting me into the structure. And then it goes on one last run, zzz, snap, gone. And I just sat there for a moment and I was like, I can't believe that I just broke off on a fish that big. And I was thinking to myself, was that even the striped bass? You know, I was trying, I was, my mind was playing tricks on me because I was like, we don't have sharks like a lot of places do. We have great whites and that's basically it. There's nothing more than, than that around. But I was thinking to myself, man, that's quite the fish to have hooked into. And uh, yeah, it, it, it kicked my ass. And I'm glad that I never saw how big that fish was because it was one of those fish that it fought three times as hard as a lot of those big bass that I'd caught in the past, including those 50 pound class fish. And uh, it was very, it was very interesting to see the difference between a bass that's 30 pounds and then a bass that's 50 pounds and how much more power that fish has. So you can only guess how big that fish was. And uh, you know, I always try to say, well, it was hopefully it was just a very rambunctious 50 pound class fish that was just in big surf and very frothed up and I just couldn't stop it. That's my best case scenario because that's one of those fish that's, you know, fish of a lifetime. You probably won't, like I won't hook a fish that big ever again. And at least a striped bass and that was quite, quite the fish. So the moral of the story is these paddle tails and it was on the no live bait needed, they catch really, really big bass. And that's what I really wanted to talk about. These soft plastics, I caught a, probably the most big fish, most big striped bass I caught this year uh, on, wow. What I'm trying to say is, out of all the plugs I fished this year, this probably caught the most big bass. And you can fish them at night, you can fish them during the day, railing them nice and slow right off the bottom. And uh, yeah, they're, they're sweet. And so I got a link in my description of this YouTube video to Fisherman Source. This is a online tackle store. They are extremely awesome. And they have a 15% discount. Going From the 1st to the 7th of November. For the no light bait needed soft plastics, everything, every single one of their soft plastics, not just the eight inch paddle tails. So go to the link in my description of this video and pick up some of these because I'll tell you what, for those of you that are in New Jersey that still have your fall run to come, these things are gonna crush for you. And if you're north where I'm at, you wanna catch some big monster striped bass next season, or maybe you wanna take a trip to Florida and try for tarpon with them. Pick some of these up, it's gonna be well worth it. 15% discount in the link of my description for Fisherman's Source. They're really fast shipping, so they'll get them out to you real quick. Uh, it also helps and supports me, so please go through the link below. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.